Well, I've been a bit slack on the content the last few weeks and I do have a cold, so I apologize, but that's because I've sold the Jeep. Got rid of the Cherokee, got myself a classic Mercedes in pretty good condition. No, I'm completely joking. Um, obviously I work on it as a mechanic on the side here and there. This is a project I've been on since late 2020, restoring this for a customer through a local garage in town called Orsula Bill Service. Uh, me and various other people have been on this project for a while and uh, I've literally just finished it. It's in this yard now waiting to be handed over to the customer and before it gets dirty, this is probably the best it's ever gonna look. I thought I'd show you guys. So let's take a closer look at it. This is a W108 chassis 280 SE. Um, I think it's standard wheelbase actually and um, it's the inline six. So when this thing came into the, uh, to the workshop in 2020, it was in a real sorry state. The paint was not looking good. It had terrible corrosion underneath. Um, you know, the interior was, was an absolute mess and, uh, and thus began the strip down. I basically stripped the whole thing down, um, back, even took the wiring looms out and everything and sandblasted it and uh, also hand sanded it down as well. So everything had to be taken back to plate and it took a really, really long time to do that. Now, not all parts have been replaced. Um, some parts have just been tidied up because obviously there was a budget on this thing. So it is difficult to occasionally find and get these parts kind of sorted out. But where things could be done, they have been. And uh, a lot of this um, chrome listing is, is new too. But, but most of the chrome parts have been sourced actually from the US and they're really the best you could kind of find of, of what was around. Um, but the paint's looking good and, and the glass has been replaced as well. Everything works on it. So the sunroof works. That was a massive job because obviously the whole interior had to come out on this, so this headliner all had to come out and um, basically be stripped and thrown away because it was completely corroded. Uh, it was not corroded, but you know, just in, in a terrible condition and um, probably probably too many gangbangs in it, to be honest with you, I think, personally, by the smell. But um, I ripped it all out and um, sourced this in the US new headliner which is very very close to to original really what the best they said it, it could really be and then the job came to we had to really rebuild the whole sunroof and get that functioning because it didn't work at all the runners were completely seized it's a cool design actually of sunroof um because obviously it's just like you know the seal on the outside doesn't really do that much so the water can get through but it sits in a tray and then it runs out of pipe work here and on the rear as well and goes through the boot and out the bottom of the vehicle so obviously some of those pipes had corroded and um the water was just kind of pooling up in 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 the back there but um it all went back together really well um i think the only the only thing that i would suggest that looks good but probably isn't is is the wood um because um yeah like the, the wood is again i sort of sourced that from the us and, and they said it was going to be wood with a bit of fiberglass behind it but, but I don't actually think it is um, and there are some colour variations here and there and just kind of inconsistencies but all in all it, it does look pretty good I mean new door seals and this has just been cleaned up some of these parts have been sourced obviously because they were missing you know the windows sort of all working basically well, I don't really want to open it with the door open and uh yeah it's uh it's nice really nice so as well as the interior and everything else the engine came out everything came out the transmission the axles all sorts of work's been done and other things like the entire subframe at the front was removed and shot blasted and painted everything everything's been done there's been no stone unturned on it and uh, obviously the fabricator that the welder had a massive job because it had some serious corrosion underneath um, so once I'd finished taking it all apart and shot blasting it and it got handed over to him he essentially had to build certain parts of the underneath from scratch again and get it back together and that's the kind of thing that the customer said basically when he handed over the vehicle he was like look it's you know 80% original and the rest he goes you know I, I just kind of want it to look good um, and be restored to its former glory um, you know he wanted to show it to his mum um, who originally bought the car in the US it was a big surprise for her um, but he's going to be using this. I mean, he, he 
it's going to be doing hundreds and hundreds of miles in it every year and using it as daily drive summer vehicle the last jobs i actually just did on it was carpeting the rear end it's uh it's it's decent you know um that is a mat obviously for the back there but uh I left that there rolled up. He's, you know, it's an optional thing. But again, the rear bumper is, is from the same place as the front one. Um, these are original, actually, and they were not cheap. I managed to find a set of these in the USA in very good condition. And, um, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to find them in good condition. I couldn't find this piece. Tried to find this everywhere, but that might be a project for another day. Um, you know, it's just that just the way it goes with the time and the budget on this thing. Before I fire it up, you can kind of hear the doors have been deadened where they close. It's just beautiful. It's working really well. I expect the reason for the sound deadening is because the owner's going to be visiting uh, some interesting places and he probably doesn't want the screams to be heard from outside the vehicle. It's just, just, just a guess, but you know, could be right. Let's fire it up, it's warmed up. Let's give it a bit of gas. It needs to warm up a bit, it's been a bit cold. Some dirty fingerprints there. That was me trying to open the window, wasn't it? I better clean that before I go. Everything works. Even this, this was a nightmare to rebuild, I had to rebuild all of that. A lot of work to get that working. All the wires and all the cables, had everything had to come out, you know. Obviously the whole thing was stripped to a shell, so obviously easy to get to when it's like that, but uh, yeah, not much fun, I'll tell you that. Take it for a little drive, sounds good, drives good, shifts good. <clears throat> Doesn't smell like a swingers club anymore. It's quality. Alright. There's nobody else's DNA in here, alright? Other than mine and a few other people's. It's better than it was before. But anyway, I'm back in my own garage now and uh, that project is done. And even though that's not really linked to overlanding and Jeeps and stuff like that, and normally what you see on the channel, it is obviously working on vehicles, which is a part of what I do on this channel. And uh, if you're into sort of fixing, repairing and restoring and bringing back to life old and broken things like me, then um, maybe you have some appreciation for that vehicle there, which has been a monumental project. Really what I've shown you doesn't do it justice. Um, the amount of work that's gone into it has just been phenomenal really and as I say I'm not the only person involved there's been a fabricator called Patrick, a paint guy called Berlio who does other detailing as well like all the chrome polishing and me and him work together to do the headliner and work together for a while to, to fix that up and do other details on it so it's just been a, a massive amount of work as you can probably appreciate and um, although it's not like absolutely like a show vehicle when you get up close to it as the owner said um, who um, brought it to us he wants it 80% looking good and the rest is a daily driver for him um, you know he's going to use it as his vehicle in the summer so that's probably the best it's going to look. Um, you know, I guess the sad part about the story is, is he is the chairman of the Swingers Club, the owner, and um, it's probably just going to be used as a centerpiece, you know, for their for their daily meet and greets that they do really down there. And um, it's probably going to come back stinking of used anal beads and rotten quesadillas again. But, uh, you know, we did our job. That's the main thing, right? But anyway, what have I been up to? In my spare time around doing that kind of work, I've obviously built some extra things. I've got a fridge slider now, and this is a tiltable slider, although it's not in tilting format at the moment. You loosen some uh, knobs at the back, a <laughs> couple of knobs there, and uh, basically the thing tilts. So if we get a bigger fridge in the future, which we probably will, it's gonna be a bit higher, a bit longer, um, then it can tilt a little bit and give you some assistance there. So that works really nicely and it's looking pretty good. And the drawer system is basically complete. I put in one of these like fancy little platforms that pop up there. 
just got some hinges off Amazon, they're really cheap. And it's really just so when you're at the back of the vehicle and you're kind of sorting out food, you can open the fridge and you, you have a surface to put stuff on, um, you know, if need be. And uh, a couple of sliders here, because obviously I like to use the Murica, it's a great winter and summer solution using white gas. Um, you just have a little clip, basically from a, a bicycle for a water bottle. And um, that can just clip on there and you can hook that up and do your cooking and to stop it spitting on the carpet and putting that there like that. So kind of minimizes spittage. And then when you want to put it on, you just tilt it on, take it off and it can sort of stay there the whole time. So it's pretty convenient. One thing I made sure to do was to make the whole fridge sliding system removable. Um, so that's pretty useful. And it just anchors in into these things here. I made some uh, plugs out of M12 bolts, uh, just drilled and tapped them. They're bolted from the other side. So you've got like an anchor point. It just means I've got this nice big flat surface here. So, you know, I can still use the vehicle as a sort of regular SUV, put the snowboards and the skis and other things in the back, things like that. Other projects I've got coming up, um, finally got myself an e-locker for the Dana 30 high pinion and it come with quite a few interesting bits. I've got shims, I've got bearings, which I probably won't use. I'll probably turn those into setup bearings and get some Timmikens. And also obviously like a wiring loom, switches, other such stuff. So I'll be really keen to get that wired up and see how that works. But it really is going to be something that I'll probably put in a bit later in the year when the summer's over and um, it'll be ready then for winter because obviously in the winter with the snow having the locker hopefully will be a game changer for the next winter. I've also got an electronic setup as well to sort out in the back of the Cherokee but I need to say thanks to Jonas from uh, Back Axle Dela Isferia. Um, we've been talking for a while and he sent me this locker really to test out before he stocks them. Um, and then he'll be able to sell them and ship them all over Europe. So he seems to be able to get lockers of all different shapes and sizes for whatever axle. And um, But he just wants me to test this one out first um, before he actually sells it, which is really cool. So um, I got this for the same price he gets them for, which is, you know, the deal he made with me, which is really nice. And he just wants some feedback really on how it performs. So I'll definitely be giving that back to him. So I got some projects to get on with, as you can probably see, not just on my vehicle, but um, there's a couple of Jeeps standing out the back there that I've, that I've got some work to do on too. There's a ZJ, which is a bit of a new addition. Not mine, used to be mine, I actually used to own that Jeep. I sold it to a mate of mine um, whose brother bought it and then, and then now another chap's got it who's the brother of the guy who bought it, obviously. But um, he wants me to do that up for him, which I'm, which I'm currently just tinkering with it at the moment. There's things like central locking, you know, intermittent idle issues. The immobilizer's been a pain in the ass. I've managed to fix that actually. And, and now the immobilizer's disabled and uh, you don't have to really worry about that anymore. Um, the sunroof's leaking, that needs welding up. I've got to do a lift kit on it, steering, you know, loads of stuff. And, and you know, in time, it's going to be kind of built up a little bit like this Cherokee you see behind me here, um, you know, with, with all the kit on it and sort of built up as a, as a decent rig. It's a V8 5.2 and um, it's a nice vehicle. It's a really good condition, absolutely mint underneath. And that, that when I owned it, that was the one thing I noticed about it. And when I, when I kind of put the pictures up online of it to sell it, it was mainly just photos of the underneath of it because it's just like, it's a cool project because there's no repair work to do. It's just straight into kind of the build work, which is which is fun. Just one of the reasons I, I was up for doing it. The 4.0, I've just started on it and um, it's running again, it's driving again, it's shifting again, it's working nice. But now it's time for it to come in here and I've got to just pull a few bits apart on the engine and get that harmonic balancer on. And, um, and then it's into the corrosion work, which um, which I have kind of started, but I've, I've kind of ripped all the interior out and put it in storage. So it's kind of just waiting now to um, to kind of get its, you know, moment in the spotlight. I don't know what you say, but uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Bit of a weird one, but more just to sort of say, um, you know, show where I've been and, and you know, show, show that project, that Mercedes, which I've occasionally shown on Instagram. And um, in the next video, I'll either be doing that electronic setup and getting that all wired in, or you'll see me out camping, one of the two. But uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Appreciate your support. 
and um, I'll see you very soon in another one. Take care.